Why was Byakuya's body in a place like that? His body was underneath the table at the very back of the dining hall. After the killer murdered Byakuya, they probably moved the body there. No, that's wrong! I'm sure Byakuya ducked under the table during the Black Night. That sounds correct. If that's the case, during the blackout, Mr. Ham Ham must have seen the killer take the knife. But it was super pitch black. It was so dark I couldn't see my food. Byakuya couldn't see in the dark either. No, that's wrong! The only one who was able to see in the dark. Why do you say that? He was using those night vision goggles we found under the table. He could have seen what was happening. So... Are you saying Byakuya was the one who used those night vision goggles? Yeah, that seems to be the case. Your reasoning is out of focus. No, that's obviously wrong. It should be the other way around. Other way around? Seriously? The killer used those night vision goggles, not Yakuya. If you just use common sense, the killer obviously used those night vision goggles. That's gotta be it. Where's your poop that the killer used them? Because if they use knife, then they could have killed Yakuya even in the dark. And in reality, so those goggles were planned in advance. The killer brought them to the crime scene. Allow me to cut through those words. Since Pekka was in the office, she could have caused the blackout at any time. It's impossible. Huh? Why is it impossible? Because I was not in the office. Not even before the blackout. I agree with that. Did you eat anything weird? I don't remember eating anything weird. Now that you mention it... You brought food to the office, right? Just a little bit from the dining hall. There might have been some laxatives in it, don't you think? No, that's wrong! And how did they do it? If you can't answer that, I'm gonna bop you on the head. Did they throw a stone and hit it? Maybe they used a remote control? It probably messed with the breaker. It does not have to be the breaker. They may have tampered with the power supply and transmitters. Or maybe they caused a power surge? I agree with that. Yeah, it seems that's how the killer caused the blackout. Stupid fool! Hold on a second, let me speak too! What the heck? You say the irons in the storage room were used to trigger the blackout? That's inexcusable! The irons in the storage room caused the blackout, and for the killer to turn the irons on. You're saying they went all the way to this, and that means everyone who is when the blackout occurred can't be a suspect. 
know just because people were in the dining hall doesn't mean they're not a suspect. But the people in the dining hall weren't able to cause you. The irons caused the blackout. Allow me to cut through those words. So obviously, Nagito! Um... He has already confessed. Um, you know... That bastard Nagito is the one who did it! He killed Byakuya with a knife -y. No, that's wrong! to the storage room in the dark. Is that true, Kuyuhiko? Don't act like I'm the fucking killer! But when the party started... Nobody saw you, you know. That means you have no alibi! No, that's wrong! The hallway was really dark during the blackout. Moving to the storage room like that... It's like making a seafood bowl without fish! Is it really not possible? What if they use the string like the cord? Maybe there's another pair of night vision goggles? What a pain, I'm gonna go with my gut. What if they used a light? I agree with that! It's the portable stove. Portable stove?! The portable stove isn't powered by electricity, and it's also small enough to carry around. So, the killer used the portable stove to move from the hallway to the storage room during the blackout. Let's see... I never considered the portable stove. But there's a hole in your argument. A hole? What kind of hole? It would be great if you could explain it to me in much more detail. Oh, I wasn't making a perverted joke or anything. It's really not a perverted joke. I'm, I'm serious. Repeating yourself just makes it even more suspicious. Now then, Hajime, will you battle against me? No, that's wrong! Will you be able to break through my argument? Did you forget what Kazuichi said earlier? He said the hall was too dark to see the office. The light from the stove that you mentioned. It contradicts his testimony. Or are you intentionally doubting his testimony? I can't back down! I 
don't doubt what Kazuichi said. What are you trying to say? The reason Kazuichi couldn't see the office was because the hallway was dark. So if a light was shining in such a dark hallway, wouldn't Kazuichi have seen it? Allow me to cut through those words! Let me ask you again. Did you go to the storage room during the blackout? There's no way I went to the storage room. I was somewhere totally different. I definitely heard Taro Taro's voice. It's handsome, unlike his face. Maybe it was recording or something? Nope, definitely a live voice. Right. As long as I have her testimony. The fact that I was in the dining hall cannot be disputed. I'll shoot through that contradiction. in this case. Let's try going over the whole incident, beginning with right after the party started. Yakuya had us gather in the dining hall of the old building near the hotel. He was extra cautious about a murder occurring that night because of a threatening letter he received. Therefore, he decided to throw a party so he could monitor us. Though one person didn't come, the rest of us assembled at the dining hall, and the party was underway. But at that time, the trap set by a certain someone was already in motion. They plugged three irons into the outlets in the storage room, which nearly kept the power usage. Additionally, they prepared something else that would activate at 11.30 p.m. The air conditioners in the office and dining hall. They had already set the timers for them. Thanks to the irons maxing out the power usage, 
The breaker was tripped when the air conditioners kicked on. Since the windows in the old building were covered, the blackout plunged the dining hall into total darkness. But when that happened, Biakia took out a specific item that he brought in his case. That item was the night vision goggles. Biakia was so concerned about a murder occurring that he brought a variety of security equipment with him. When he put on his night vision goggles, Biakia witnessed a certain someone making a suspicious move. He saw Nagito guiding himself with the desk lamp's power cord so he could get under the table. That's right, everything up to that point was all part of Nagito's plan. The murder warning to Byakuya, the source of the blackout, it was all Nagito. While the blackout was happening, someone else, the real killer, began making their move in the kitchen. The killer probably already knew about Nagito's plan, so they knew a blackout was coming. That's why the killer prepared all the items they would need to commit their crime in the dark beforehand. They needed a light source, which was provided by the portable stove in the kitchen. They needed a weapon, too. This had also been hidden in the kitchen beforehand. The long iron skewer used in the churrasco dish. The killer hid that inside that meat with the bone in it. With the weapon and portable stove in hand, the killer stepped out into the hallway. First, they closed the fire door in the hallway so their light source wouldn't peek toward the dining hall. Then, guided by the light, the killer headed toward the storage room and grabbed a specific item. That's right, a tablecloth to block the blood splatter. With this, the killer finished their preparations and snuck under the floorboards through the secret passage. They probably turned off the portable cooking stove at that point or left it near the entrance of the door. The floor in the dining hall is full of gaps, so there's no way they could have safely held a light source. But thanks to the glowing mark they painted earlier, the killer was able to get beneath the table. Under the table, Byakuya found the knife that had been hidden there. If only he had retreated, he probably wouldn't have gotten killed. He had to retrieve that knife, and at that moment, the killer lurking beneath the floorboard stabbed straight up with the iron skewer. The killer had been waiting in the dark for the moment when the glowing paint began to move. After they murdered Byakuya, the killer purposefully shouted from beneath the floorboards to make it seem like they were still in the dining hall. Afterward, they came out from underneath the floorboards and rushed back to the kitchen. Then, after hiding the murder weapon in the kitchen, they rejoined the group as if nothing had happened. There's only one person who would have been able to commit this crime. Especially if that person is someone who think of an unexpected way to hide a weapon inside food.
Isn't that right, Teru Teru Hanamura?